Hello everybody and welcome to another Monte Carlo and Python tutorial video. In this video we're just going to pick up where we left off with this De Allenbear strategy, but now what we want to do is we want to use the Monte Carlo simulator to find out at least a couple variables. So in this one we want to do wager size and wager count. Now again, wager size is in direct relationship to your full amount of funds. At least that's my argument. So I don't really see any reason why we would want to make that a, as well a variable uh, because really we're looking for a percentage size of the total amount. So for now we're just going to do these two variables. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a, a wild true loop up here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do as well is let's go up here where all of our um, constants are. Let's go ahead and cut and paste those down here. Um, so we'll just uh, paste it right here, I guess. We don't need lower bust and higher profit, so I'm just going to move that up here for now. So we don't really care about that right now. Sample size, we want that. That's going to be a constant. Starting funds, that's also going to be a constant. But as I said, we're going to want to switch up wager size and wager count. And then as well, we want the return. That's going to be a contingent. So we want that to, because we're going to make a while true loop. So I believe all of the rest of this will be contained in the while true. So let's, let me make that while true loop. So it makes more sense to you guys. And so now we've got this. So the only uh, constants up here are sample size and starting funds. Now the next thing that we want is we're going to save, I'm trying to think. I guess that's really all we need for now. So then we come down here, wager size equals 100 and wager count equals 100,000, or at least what we've got here. Um, what we might want to do is switch this up a little bit. So for example, we could do wager size of 100. Um, instead, what we're going to do is this. So comment both of those out. And instead, wager size is going to equal random.uniform. And let's do 1.0 to 100.00. Oh. And starting funds, instead of 100,000, we're going to make that 10,000. Um, that way 100 is a decent enough, 100 is 1%. Um, and I, I guess we could actually, we could go all the way up to 1,000. Um, that way we're trading up to 10% starting. So wager size, anything from 1 to, you know, from 1 1,000th, 1, or actually it's even, even smaller. Hey, you guys get the point. <laughs> it's a wide range of wager sizes. Next, uh, wager count, that's going to equal random.uniform, and this is how many wagers are we willing to perform. Let's do 1.0, and again, I think we should allow up to 10,000 wagers, anything between 1 and 10,000, and really 1 is a horrible number to start with. Let's do 10 and 10,000. So we've got those down. Now, um, so that's going to be our random uh, two random variables. Now we've got return. That's always going to be the case. DA profits, DA busts, all of that. Um, those stay the same. Then we've got uh, while counter, blah, 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 blah. Sounds good. We come down here. And now what I want to go ahead and do is we're going to set... Um, I guess we will use this, but not right this instant. But we are going to make an ROI variable. So let's say ROI equals that. And then we want to have like a, a line that we draw. So we want to know how large of a return on investment do we care for. Now, the next problem that we have is let's say we have a first of all let's make this sample smaller so what it's going to do is for every random variable it's going to test the sample so i'm going to make this more like 10,000 uh, that other one was way too big that would take a year to get a, anything decent uh where was i so down here and so we want to pick a number now i don't really know if i want to i hate to hard code this really we should have 
you know, ROI, and then let's make a uh, total invested equals that. And ROI should be some form of total invested, right? Uh, so what I think we'll do, let's run this a couple times to get a, 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 some sort of a number, and then we'll make this a percentage. So as long as ROI out of total invested is greater than X, that way we can change the starting funds and all of that um, dynamically, and we won't have to like pick a new number. Because obviously if you do more wagers, you really are looking for a strategy that makes more money, and if you're starting with more money, obviously you want to make more money, so we don't want to hard code it. So with that, uh, we should be able to just run this. So let me save this and run, and hopefully we can run. And as it goes through the strategies, we w hopefully it's going to spit out some stuff. So this one lost a lot of money, and that was a pretty big number. Oh, you know what? Let me uh, let's break this for now, uh, so I can actually read this. Print underscores. All right, start again. So anyway, return on in interest. Let's see, we got three hundred thousand, but this one was a huge number. This one was two million. Twenty-one million, actually. We lost twenty-one million on that strategy. <laughs> Man, these guys are getting screwed right now. Although these are randoms, right? We're just randomly picking numbers, just for the record. So we did have a twenty-one million. That's an eighteen million. So so far we're seeing like twenty million. Uh, to beat. Um, I wish I knew. Maybe I'll go consult that video and see what the actual numbers were on the profitable version of this strategy. So this was the typical Allen Bear strategy right here. So total invested was a hundred billion, and we made eight hundred sixty-five million. So 0.865%. So that's the number to beat, 0.865. So let me close out of this. And so what we want to do is total invested equals this. And then what we want to know is, uh, I guess, percent ROI. And that's going to equal ROI out of total invested, um, this in parentheses times 100.00. Now let's add one more print here just to see if we got this right. Percent ROI, and that's going to equal percent ROI. Save and run it. And hopefully we can see a few examples. So percent ROI, 8% is what it's claiming. That can't possibly be correct. ROI return total 8%. Hold on, let me pause this and check the maths on that 8%er. Um here okay just really wanted to check that math that is correct so the number to beat really is 0 0.8 and <laughs> this eight percentage is is nice but just keep in mind that we're only running for 10,000 samples okay so that's very attractive and we need to print out what the uh, interesting we should print out the uh, the wager size and the count as well. I would would have liked to know what that was. Print um, wager size. I guess we'll make this typical. Wager size and print wager count. Wager count and run it some more. Lost money, large wager size there, wager count. And I suppose as well what we could do is we could say wager size percentage maybe. Well, that's running. Let me do that too. So print 
wager size percentage. And that would be wager size out of um, starting funds. And then again, times 100. So we'll encase this, bring that in. Pretty sure you can have spaces there, but we'll find out. Uh, we don't want to find out. Wager size percentage. Okay, so now we got a percentage, and we'll use that uh, later on as well. So anyways, run it again. Mm -mm -mm. Did anybody make money on this one? I don't see anybody. Oh, we do have a 3% ROI. That's pretty good. Anyway, coming down here. Uh, this was a positive. Wager size was a 2% wager. This was also a positive. Wager size was 7. Goodness. This was a positive wager size, 0 0.7. Okay. So anyways, you guys get the point. Now what do we want to do? I'll just leave this running and then we'll look at it in a second. But we do know that we need to be at least positive 0 0.86% uh, ROI, right? So what we want to do now is come down here and if percent ROI is greater than 0 0.865%, uh, then show us the money, right? So we don't. If it's not greater than 0.865% ROI, we really don't care. Wow, look at this one: 49% ROI. Wager count 6665. Thank goodness it wasn't 666. Uh, wager size was pretty big too. Anyway, so we're seeing a bunch of uh, successful ones and a bunch of unsuccessful ones. You know what else would be kind of cool? I have some ideas moving forward. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is um, we've got this. Maybe we'd want to make this number a little bit bigger. Oh, it looks like we're still returning uh, negatives. But what would be interesting is we're eventually going to plot this up. So I was just going to plot up the positives, but it probably would be a good idea to plot up the negatives too. So the positives in green and the negatives in red. And then where there's crossover, that's risk. And then where there's not crossover, that's not risk. I think that's what we'll end up doing. Uh, we're going to have a pretty badass looking plot by the end of this. So anyways, um, that's going to conclude this tutorial video at least. Where at least right now what we're doing is we're just returning successful returns basically. So um, anything that has a percent ROI on average greater than 0.865 we return those variables. So anyways, that's going to conclude this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until the next video.